Uh, hello everyone. Um, today with the Gauntlet, uh, we are playing uh, this game, Red Carnations on a Black Grave, uh, by Kat Ramen um, of Aviatrix Games, and uh, this is a game about the Paris Commune in 1871. Uh, we are we are all going to be playing uh, communards during that era. Um, my name is Donna. My pronouns are he him. Uh, today uh, I'm going to be playing uh, Louise Michel, uh, the Red Virgin of Montmartre. Um, she is uh, the illegitimate daughter of a nobleman, a school teacher, and a radical. Uh, and she works in the Montmartre com committees and serves in the National Guard. And I am also going to be playing uh, Felix Vincent, uh, who is a poet uh, who has not joined the National Guard yet. Uh, he is a 20-year-old man, he is a radical proletarian poet, an occasional journalist. Um, so yeah, that is, uh, those are my two characters for today. Uh, we'll see what, what happens to them. Uh, so let's get the rest of our introductions um, from our players and their characters, uh, left to right in the character keeper. Okay, yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Thomas. I use he, him pronouns. I will be playing, um, my first character is Win, uh, a Vietnamese student uh, uh, from Saigon, uh, which is a part of um, then French occupied Vietnam. Um, uh, he's been sponsored to come to Paris uh, by the church and the assumption is that once his education is done, he will uh, go back and either become either become a priest or become a colonial administrator. Um, uh, he is currently being tutored by uh, Louise Michel. Um, my other character is Amanda Mercier, uh, who is a sex worker, a twenty-eight year old woman. Um, uh, she is a model for artists, and she is the mother of one of the other characters. Um, and um, yeah, uh, she she currently I think is a is a soldier in the National Guard as well. I'm not sure, but yeah, that's me. Lovely. Hi there. I'm uh, Sebastian. I go by he him. And today I'm playing Gustave Courbet, uh, who lots of people will know from the origin of the world and similar realist paintings of the time. In the Commune, he is 51 years old and already one of the leading if similarly revolutionary um, painters of his time. Um, he works with Victor Jacquard, who is the husband of one of the other characters, uh, one of the other players' characters. And my second character is Camille Mercier, who is the child of uh, Amanda Mercier, who we just heard, and a student of Louise. And I haven't specified the gender yet, but I'm gonna say that Camille is a girl. And hi, my name is David. Uh, I use he, him pronouns. And the characters that I will be playing today are Monique Rousseau, um, a midwife and physician. Um, she's a 28-year-old woman from an old and wealthy free family of colour in Martinique. Um, she graduated from medical school in the United States and is now a midwife and physician for the neighbourhood women. Um, and my second character is um, Anna Jacquard, who is a 27-year-old Russian woman um, born Anna Vasilyevna Korvin Kukovskaya. Uh, she has written for radical circles in Russia. Uh, Dostoevsky proposed to her, but she turned him down. She is married to uh, Victor Jacquard, a fellow radical. Okay, great. Yeah. We had uh, we had words about Dostoevsky earlier. <laughs> uh, okay, I think we're all Team Anna on this one. <laughs> uh, so uh, next, what we do is we each draw two questions from the questions deck. Uh, we're gonna answer one of them. Uh, so you can like drag them into uh, your uh, hand. Uh, and you'll notice that 
On these, I did put in all of the text. So if you hover over the cards, you're going to get a, a pop up. And some of these are kind of addressed to the player. Some of these are obviously addressed to a character. You can you can choose. Obviously, you're going to choose which uh, cards questions to answer. But if one of them is um, kind of referring to one of your characters, again, you can choose whichever seems most appropriate or interesting. Um, so I know when everyone has taken a look. Uh, I will answer first, and then we'll go back around. Oh, so, sorry, were we drawing these or? Um... Yeah, yeah. So you can draw. You draw two cards from the question. Cool. Deck. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No wrong. Uh, and then you're just going to pick one to, to answer. So uh, I have a question. What did you do that landed you in prison? Who did you meet there? I'm two firebrands, so that seems to work for 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 me. Um, I think Felix had had been landed in prison before, um, and I wonder if. Um, if this was, you know, a, a few years ago, maybe as a as a young member of the international, and um, Thomas, how would you how do you feel if if uh, Felix met Win in in prison? Maybe maybe Win wasn't like incarcerated, but maybe he was doing some some work when he was a, a student, you know, some, um, some um, work with the church or some work with, with, with yeah, you know, with, yeah. In, in I, I, I think, I think work with the church makes the most sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, some sort of, uh, yeah, part of, part of uh, his education. Yeah. yeah. So do you, do you think maybe Felix is a little bit responsible for, for radicalizing Owen? Oh yeah, that that's great. Yeah, and then Felix in, maybe introduced me into uh, uh, Louis. Louis Michel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, perfect. Yeah, I think that works. I mean, I'm not. What, what do you think was 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 Win already on that journey, or did did Felix and and Louise really open open his eyes? <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think he was he was headed on a completely different path, and then is is uh, radicalized very quickly, but still like from almost from scratch. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, so yeah. Um... Thomas, you have a question in mind to answer. Um, so, so I've drawn two questions, and I pick one, and I give the answer. Right, Donna? Yeah. That's how this works. Yeah. Um, so I have this <clears throat> one kind of uh, sort of juicy question, which is, who was a confidential police informant before the commune? Mm. Name a character who knows the secret. So it's it's not one of the player characters. It is it is a just a, a you know whatever a made up uh, a made up person. And uh, but I pick who knows the secret. And um, I'm open to suggestions for who who this this NPC could be. Uh, does anyone have any ideas for uh, what would make for an interesting um, like, do we want this to be somebody who's uh, 
who is our colleague at the moment, who's our comrade at the moment, or somebody who is just, who, who is not, right? Like just uh, like someone kind of outside our circles. So. I, I think it would be interesting if it was essentially one of the, one of the relations to a character that isn't played by someone, if that makes sense. Um, okay, yeah, that's, that's a great idea. Is, uh, could it be, anybody like that? Could it be Victor Laclar, Jacques It's none of our characters, but two of us have relations to them. So that would sort of tie that together. I, I was going to volunteer Victor as well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Yep. Uh, the uh, the offering is accepted. <laughs> Victor, uh, Victor is uh, so yeah. Victor was a was a police informant uh, before the before the commune, and um, uh, oh man, I think uh, I think the best the best person to ask is is Anna, right? <laughs> like I think uh, I think Anna knows and uh, has not uh, has not said anything um how, how does how does anna justify that yeah um i think um i think that anna is unhappy that that he, that he made that choice uh put it that way but i think um she has justified it by by the fact that he has now um you know with the events of the commune that, that he has now obviously chosen a side sort of thing um maybe you know that the, the the people that he um um informed on weren't weren't um you know maybe she kind of uh, believes his line that he was sort of running a bit of a kind of double agent type uh, situation. Um, but I think she's probably keeping a wary eye on him um, uh, now. Does, does, does Victor know that uh, Anna knows? I think so, I think so. Okay. Nice. Uh, I think it's worth pointing out that, um, that Victor is a military commander with the National Guard, right? Uh, so uh, the, the prompt question for his character is, are you truly ready to die for this revolution? Which is, is really, really interesting uh, now. Uh, so I guess we'll, we'll find out. Maybe that decision ends up being made, made for, for him. Uh, okay, awesome. Uh, Sebastian, how about your, your question? Yeah, so I have two lovely questions, but here's one I would like to start with. <clears throat> Choose a character that one of your characters is trying to convert to their beliefs, ask the player if they're interested or if they resist. So I've just read up a bit about Gustav Kobe, and it seems to me like he's basically a pretty staunch pacifist slash anti-war globalist who believes in kind of peace and fraternity between all nations. And as part of that, he was also kind of against the commune putting up its own committee of public safety, defending the country against enemies, uh, uh, foreign enemies, which also harkens back to the original French Revolution. So I think one of the potential conflicts there is that he might be, again, this kind of staunch um, pacifist, and there might be another character who is of a different opinion and believes that we actually need to continue the fight under under the rule of the commune, but that we need to continue to uh, fight of France and that it is imprudent or unrealistic or wishful thinking that you could do away with militaries, that that's just a stupid idea. Um, so any takers for somebody who might have a more militaristic bent or might be willing to be persuaded to become pacifist? I mean, I, I, I wonder, I mean, I think um, Louise Michel might be uh, someone who would take an awful lot of work to convince uh, of that. Um, but it could be an interesting uh, dynamic. I'm not sure if anyone else has, has any ideas. 
yeah, what it doesn't it doesn't need to work. It's fine if it's if they're just clashing over that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think that's a, that's I think that's nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, particularly if she serves in the National Guard. Yeah, no, I yeah. I do like yeah. that. Uh... <clears throat> okay. Cool. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Let's go with that. Uh, and David. Yeah, so um, of the two questions I have, I think there's one that I am more interested in, but it also is, it has a potential to get quite messy. So um, I will read this one out and see if the characters involved are interested. Um, and if not, I'll go for the other one. Uh, so the question I have is, one character is Camille's father. Does Camille know that this character is their father? Um, so like I said, if, if, if that is an interesting thing that we want to go, go into, uh, I think it's quite a cool one, given that we've got, um, Camille and, um, uh, Amanda, um, sort of in play, but, um, yeah, it's up to you. I think, cause I think also we, only, we have a, a limited, uh, cast of people that could be the father, um, Uh, Although yeah, I just suppose the, the father doesn't have to be a player character necessarily, does it? Um, yeah, I guess it doesn't have to be. Um, I guess the, the the juicy questions are, are are usually pointing or at least relevant to to PC though, right? Yeah. Um, so I, th I think realistically, it would be either Felix or Gustav. Um, uh, and, and and Gustav is less interesting because uh, yeah. Sebastian's on me. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So so I mean I'd I'd be I'd be happy for this to be Felix, um, if you if that sounds okay to you. Uh, uh, I don't think that's a good idea. You don't think that's uh, a good idea? I it would mean that Felix was sixteen. <laughs> Sorry, uh, who's, sorry. Uh, uh, Camille, Camille is 12 years old, and Felix is 28. Therefore, uh, it would be, uh, it would mean that Felix well, to be. Yeah, but, but Amanda is the same age as Felix, right? That is true, that is true. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm okay with that, yeah. What about uh, Sebastian? I'm sorry, you mean uh, Gustav as a known or unknown father, or what do you mean? Felix. What do you think about Felix being Camille's father? Um, I'm fine with trying that out. That ties into a potential other question that I would have, which is similarly um, <laughs> about the father of one of my characters. So, yeah, no, I'm very good with that. Yeah, cool. And um, I think I'm going to say, because for, for maximum uh, or for, for maximum dramatic reveal in game, I don't think that Camille knows that Felix is her father um, at the moment. Yep, 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 yep. Do you, do, you, do you think Felix knows or is it uh, is it this a secret guarded by Amanda? Um, um, David, does, do any of your characters have any connection to this or was is this something that is tied uh, the three of us in a neat board? That you, you yeah, no, no, my, my my characters have no uh, <laughs> no no stake in what's going on. Oh, here. No, I was, well, I was sorry, wondering, not no stake, I was wondering but... if one of your characters knew or something. Like that. Uh, yeah, I think I think even Felix doesn't know. Yeah, I think that's maximum uh, maximum stakes. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, drama. <laughs> uh, okay. So, <clears throat> so with, with all of that primed, I think it's time to jump in. Uh, so the, the the way we we play this is we have a prologue. Uh, if you check out the the prologue tab, there's a bunch of text here, which is kind of historical, immediate historical background. 
um, I think we're supposed to read this uh, just so we're all on the same page. Um, so it is a good bit of text. Um, how do you feel about reading reading this out loud? Or are we happy to just <laughs> read it ourselves? I'm I'm good with reading it out loud. We I guess we can split it up into yeah, there's individual there's five sections, big paragraphs. So. so so I can do the first one and the last one. Um, and then after this, we do a, a like a, a a mini montage uh, for both of our characters at the very start on March eighteenth. Uh, okay, so. Uh, the Paris Commune. This game is about the Paris Commune, a working class revolution in 1871. Uh, we will be playing characters that live in Montmartre, one of the most radical districts of Paris. For 72 days, the Commune was one of the most progressive governments in history. During its brief lifetime, it tried to create a state with workers' rights, free education, and the liberation of women as its foundations. The conservative government headquartered in Versailles invaded Paris at the end of May and crushed the Commune. Uh, so Thomas, do you wanna uh, read Yeah, yeah. Uh, Paris in the 1870s. Um, Paris was the most important city in continental Europe under, empo under Emperor Napoleon III, nephew of the more famous Napoleon. The center of the city has been rebuilt with broad boulevards and chic restaurants and boutiques, the capital of humanity. But in the poor neighborhoods on the outskirts like, uh, like Montmartre, uh, uh, unemployment was high and people lived in cramped, crowded conditions without running water or indoor plumbing. Conditions were ripe for another of the once-a-generation Parisian revolutions. Yeah, the Franco-Prussian War. In, the in 1870, the emperor was lured into a war against Prussia and its German allies. The war was a disaster. The emperor and most of the army were captured in September. A republic was proclaimed and tried to continue the war. The Prussians besieged Paris. The winter was cold and food ran out. The rich ate animals from the zoo, the poor dogs, cats, and rats. The only way to get mail out of the city was by balloon. Finally, the Republic surrendered to the Germans. Uh, the soul of the Republic. Parisians felt betrayed. Despite the large number of troops of the National Guard, a militia that was often uh, the only paying work during the siege, the government never supported them for an attack against the Prussians. When the national elections returned to parliament with a monarchist majority, Paris felt sure that the Republic would fall and any hope that they had for a more equal society would be destroyed. Several insurrections broke out. The battle for the soul of the French Republic was about to begin. Uh, the government, now led by Adolf Pierre, agreed to pay 5 billion francs in reparations. The Germans remained dug in east of Paris. The National Guards, cannons and Montmartre had been bought by its inhabitants, not the government, but Pierre ordered their seizure to prevent insurrection. Before dawn on March 18th, 1871, soldiers of the French army came to take the guns but were confronted by a crowd of Montmartre women. The commander ordered his soldiers to shoot the women, but they arrested and executed him instead. The National Guard took over Paris and ordered elections for a new government for Paris and France, the Commune. So, uh, so in our in our prologue, uh, we each take a turn narrating a brief montage scene in both of our characters' lives during the day of March 18th. Uh, I guess we'll start with Thomas. Each player should only narrate a scene about one of their characters on their turn, and we will make two circuits around the table uh, so we can build on details already. So this can be from before, after, or during the attempt to seize the National Guard's cannons. Uh, so this should be pretty pretty short and give us a sense of who our character is and what they do. Uh, so, okay, yeah, I think uh, uh, the sort of brief glimpse of Amanda uh, is that she is one of the women that form the crowd uh, around those guns. Um, like, I think it's like um, I think it's like very early morning. And the National Guard has been sent to kind of do it before people are uh, really awake or something like that. But uh, the uh, people in Montmartre kind of see them coming. And there is this spontaneous uh, crowd that forms with uh, Amanda kind of um, somewhere close to the front, uh, 
locking arms with the fellow women and kind of trying to form that barrier. Okay. Yeah, you. Yeah. So I think the next scene is with Camille Mercier. Um, she just comes back from a. Um, so we similarly see her in the morning. She's just on the way back from one of the um, schooling sessions with um, Louise Michel, and um, um, we basically see her getting into a fist fight with all ruffled clothes and a bloody nose uh, with some boys that. Um, she ran into who were poking fun at her and Louise Michel and were telling her that she was dressed in an absolutely not girl-like manner. And uh, she was telling those boys off and saying that they have uh, terrible bourgeois ideas about what it is to be a human being. And um, um, as they continue to heckle her, she basically then chose to break into a fist fight with them. Yeah, and I think we see um, um, Anna, who is likewise um, at the, um, the the seizure of the cannons, possibly a little back from the others, and as kind of the um, um, uh, the 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 the, um, the national uh, sorry not the national guard the, as the um, the thing starts to wind down. We see her with a um, notebook um, out, talking to um, several of the women and, and, and jotting down notes um, as she does so, um, as she's clearly um, uh, uh, preparing to write um, uh, an article on this uh, great victory. Um, I think we maybe at the the. the the point of of danger we uh, when the national guard are seizing the, the cannons we see louise michelle uh, arm in arm with amanda and i think just as the the national guard kind of are, are given the order to to shoot you know, she she points at the at the colonel standing at the rear of the of the line and uh, yells at the soldiers that uh, that that man is our true enemy. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, so Thomas, do you want to give us a second for your other character, and then we'll go back through? The yeah, thing. yeah. Um, uh, uh, I think. Um, I think Vin is hearing this like second hand. I think um, he is uh, uh, he's talking uh, he's talking to a kind of um, uh, some kind of some kind of priest who is uh, sort of like informing him in uh, uh, in like this kind of terrified note, right? Like, oh, you know, th th these things are happening. There's this kind of showdown with the National Guard in uh, in Montmartre, and like, uh, like I think I think uh, uh, Vin is sort of like doing this thing where like he is trying to uh, he's trying to pretend that. Uh, that he has the same opinion as this priest that you know what is going on is some kind of uh, terrible apocalyptic event uh, that could uh, where secretly he is um, thrilled and excited and um, is, is is dying to kind of find out uh, more yeah okay. returning to gustav Kobe, i think if it is Early in the morning, he is um, <clears throat> probably in his studio with a hangover um, and, uh, and with a model and um, is um, um, annoying that model right now with one of his endless monologues about how the French art establishment needs to be 
basically torn down and replaced with a completely egalitarian system where there are no great art schools anymore and no prizes and no medals and no nothing. Um, and, uh, and, and, and that, um, uh, uh, yeah, egalitarianism in the art is a part and parcel and, uh, and, and precondition for egalitarianism in society. If art depicts life, how reality really is, and if in art life itself there are uh, no artificial social hierarchies, and you see the model basically slowly dozing off uh, while he's on a round and sketching her, and from time to time um, refilling with whatever was left over from the wine yesterday. Um, and I think we see Dominique. Um... Uh, likewise, at the um, um, at the um, uh, the the, the, um, the canon emplacement, um, though she's she's a considerably further back. She's she's obviously got um, you know um, a, a space set up. There's there's sort of bandages out on on um, uh, and stuff ready. And as as sort of the um, uh, soldiers return and retreat and um, uh, I think she breathes um, a, a sigh of relief and begins packing um, her equipment away. Um, I think we see Felix um, down the street from uh, from where the altercation uh, occurred. Um, Sitting, sitting in a cafe outside, uh, you know, drink, drinking coffee and, and scribbling in a notebook, and I think you know he didn't see it happen, but you know people are chatting about it on the street, and he's overhearing details, and uh, he starts to write a poem, which which very much puts him on the scene, you know, um, a bit of poetic license, you know, what can you say? Uh, okay, so I think what that is our prologue done. Before we jump into uh, Act One, I think we should take a break. Okay, we are back and ready to jump into Act One. Um, there is a um, a bunch of text here. There's three paragraphs. So this Act One is, um, I guess the the guiding themes here are optimism, uh, optimistic, joyful, unbridled. Uh, and so this is between March 18th and April 2nd, uh, Carnival of the Oppressed, in which the commune establishes itself and begins the social revolution. Uh, so I'll, I'll read the first paragraph here and then we can go around the table uh, as well. Um, by the evening of the 18th, the army and government had fled Paris in a disorganized retreat to the former Royal Palace in Versailles, 20 kilometers west of Paris. Other communes sprang up in Lyon, Marseille, Toulouse, but most were quickly crushed by the Versailles government. In Algeria, a revolt began against the French colonists. Uh, yeah, I can, I can read the next one. Uh, elections were quickly held in Paris a couple of delegates decentralized, uh, a council of delegates decentralized and using direct democracy took over the government. Some people wanted to march right away on Versailles and attack the government before they could regroup. While we debated, the Versailles forces were already moving towards Paris. Over to rents were forgiven, goods pawned at the government pawn shops. The pawn payday lenders of the time were reclaimed. Complete separation of church and state, a working class dream was decreed. Everywhere there were lectures and free classes and committees or welfare, building barricades and many other things. Okay, so, so the way uh, the way this works is a little bit like when we chose characters. Uh, so we're gonna, um, I'm gonna draw out three cards from the uh, placards deck. So you should see those. Um, and we're each going to uh, set a scene. Uh, so uh, Thomas, you went first in our 
a montage prologue. So first player for Act 1 will be Sebastian. Uh, so again, as before, I only have the bare minimum on the cards, but if you, uh, you can either select uh, from the card section here to get the uh, to get the option then, or if you wanted to, you can click on the placards tab to get the full rundown for each card before you make your choice. So you're going to choose one of these, um, set a scene that we can play through, uh, and then you know once we if we feel that that card has been resolved, we can draw a new card to replace it. Uh, and when everyone has set a scene and we're happy to move on, when we go to Act 2. Uh, the important notice here is that no, none of our characters will die in Act 1. That sounds um, very good unless we, we consider what that means for Act 2 and 3. Uh, so, uh, yeah, um, let us know what you think, uh, Sebastian, which card you're going to play, and then we will uh, we'll play through a scene uh, for one of your characters in that scene. I think we should start with a musical interlude. Um, so a grand concert scheduled for Sunday at the Tuileries um, with um, shell fire in, in fired in the background. Um, so yeah, I totally, totally want to go with that one. So that ah, already chosen, excellent. Um, so yeah, this is one of the the, the kind of the, uh, the 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 beautiful, almost thought impossible days of the early um, of the early commune, where uh, we have a spring garden, beautiful sun. Um, we have loads of people from the poor areas of the city mingling in this area which was previously just really just the area for for the well-off um to mingle freely um loads of different artists um, um giving free courses in parallel while this is happening teaching little groups of um teaching little groups of uh, citizens all across the city um, how to draw while we have this beautiful concert running in the background. Um, I think from my end, this would be the scene where while we have the music in the background, we have a conversation going on between um, Gustave and Louise, if that works. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and so, so are we, are we like sitting, sitting in a couple of chairs, or, or like lying in a on a on a picnic at this concert, or or what do we think the. Uh, um, what do you think the or kind of physical placement in the scene is? Yeah, um, I think chairs are good. So I think kind of white, um, just white lawn chairs um, that we're sitting in. We're sitting a bit aside from the concert itself, so that our talking doesn't uh, doesn't um, disturb other people in their in their pleasure of listening to the music as well. But we're still well within ear. Uh, reach of the concert itself. So we're hearing the music playing. Um, we see people, again, uh, idling about on the green. And um, and yeah, Gustav is just basically over gushing and overjoying and going, see, this is, this, is, this is how the harmony between people can work. Just like the music here is harmonious. If you just let the natural order play out, then we, we don't need strife, we don't need fight, we don't need weaponry, where um, uh, if you just let the natural order shine, then, then, then all people can be happy together. Gustav, you take a look around here. Do you see any of Versailles dogs here? 
no, none of those people are here. And that is why we can be peaceful. I mean, you're not an unintelligent man. You, you can't believe this nonsense that we can, that the sheep can lay down with the lion. Well, see what happened with the cannons, right? Instead of those soldiers shooting at the women, they turned around at their own oppressor. Granted, unfortunately, they then chose to execute their commander, but this is, right, the, the, the lift sensory experience of what kind of, what kind of uh, harmony between, between the people, between the classes is possible is enough to melt the heart and turn around to even the military soldiers. I grant you, take any soldier from Versailles and place them here in this garden. And within 15 minutes of soaking up this beautiful atmosphere of birds and suns and people and music, they will be a communard. I think at this point, there's just that like crack of a shell exploding over the, <laughs> the western part of the city. Well, I, I will concede a point to you, Gustav. Once we have executed or, or jailed every colonel, every count, every advisor to the Republic, then we will no longer need violent means. And I think if you will jail and execute and execute violence on all of these other military people, you will just train up and inculcate yet another generation who believe that violence is a, a viable means to an end rather than placing them here in this environment. This shelling that we hear out there is there because people are shooting at each other. Just bring them here, have them sit together, have them enjoy the music. And believe me, a, a non-violent transition is possible. Well, why don't you visit them in Versailles and convince them of this, Gustave? Well, if you promise to not come along with um, uh, with 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 communards bearing weapons, I, I I bet you there is a good chance if we instead we we bring along, you know, paintings and instruments and not muskets. Well, how, how about uh, you bring it up at our next committee and I'm sure we will send you there with best wishes and uh, maybe a rabbit's foot or two. Well, you may be joking, but I will take you up on that. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm already articulating my speech. Um, so I think Louise Michel, you know, maybe, um, maybe stands up and like pats Gustav on the shoulder. Um, uh, before kind of uh, circulating, cir circulating else elsewhere through the through the party. I think Gustav is continuing to sit there and just um, um, I don't know, br brimful with energy, just humming along with the music that he's listening to while trying to write down the first words of the speech that he's going to give. And just from time to time, here's the kind of shelling in the background and kind of goes, ah, as if there's a kind of a, a fly that he tries to buzz away because it's killing his buzz. Great. Uh, do you want to add anything more to that scene, Sebastian? Are you happy with that? No, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, great. Uh, David. Yeah, so... Um... So I think... Uh, so if we want to resolve that musical interlude, we can, we can draw a new card from the placard deck. Um, for, for another prompt. Uh, 
I think. Um, oh, let's do another one. No, nope, that's the wrong thing. There we go. <laughs> um, yeah, I think. Um, I think I'm going to go with Jenny Marks. Um, so, uh, Monsieur Thiers fulfills a great revolutionary mission. By means of his prefects, priests, and police, he will before long provoke a general rising of the peasantry. The daughter of Karl Marx, head of the Communist International, arrives from London to report back to her father and the London papers on the commune. Um, so I think that this is maybe um, um, a, um, a meeting of the Communist International at um, uh, the, 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 you know, the Paris branch of the international at whatever, um, pro probably some um, uh, coffee house or, um, um, or the like, um, uh, given over to the event. Um, I, I imagine this is a, um, an open meeting if, if um, uh, others, others wish to join in as well. But yeah, thanks. I think this is uh, there. And um, no, that actually, I think technically, both of my characters are uh, are aligned with the uh, international. I think for the purposes of this scene, um, I'm going to be focusing on um, Anna, uh, Anna Jaclard, um, uh, though though Dominique is probably also in attendance. Um, I think Felix is probably the only other PC in the international. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering, um, uh, Thomas, do you think that um, uh, Vin might be um, uh, interested in coming along to this? Yeah, I think uh, I think uh, um, potentially uh, just hiding in sort of Felix's shadow a little bit, just one step. <laughs> Uh, behind him, yeah. Um, yeah, so, um, I think there's there's you know probably some um, I imagine there's 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 some general um, uh, talks and speeches being given for a while and I think um, this is, we'll probably like jumping into the into the sort of aftermath while people are kind of milling about with uh, um, uh, with coffee um, and the like um, and um, Yeah. Um, uh, Anna will, um, I think, find herself um, in conversation with um, um, Felix and um, Vin. Um, and uh, yeah, um, we'll say, uh, um, Comrade Vincent, it's. Uh, what do you um, uh, do you think of our uh, um, our, um, our visitor uh, today? Well, it's uh, very impressive that uh, she's made the trip here, but uh, I don't know. I guess we shall see how much support. Uh, she can drum up for us. Um, I, I expect the, the London papers are rather dismissive of anything, except maybe that it causes the French discomfort. 
Indeed, I, I, I hardly think we can rely entirely on the um, uh, on the, on the times to uh, um, uh, spread our work to the um, uh, to the masses. Um, the, the, they must surely fear that uh, the uh, people of um, uh, the people of London will rise up as we have done once they see what we are able to achieve. But sorry, please um, forgive me. Um, Shall turn to Finn. Um, I don't believe we've been um, introduced. I have not seen you at um, at one of these uh, meetings before. Um, I'm Anna Jacquard. Um, uh, I think I think Vin uh, um, is 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 uh, like wearing a hat and like takes it off and uh, and kind of uh, uh, like. Like just kind of like half half kind of lowers the head and goes uh, uh, pleasure pleasure to meet you. Uh, kind of introduces himself and says, um, uh, uh, "Mrs. Jacquard, are you uh, are, are you from Paris? I I sense that you uh, are uh, uh, are an outsider as well to some extent." <sighs> Yes, my um, my husband is uh, is from here. I uh, I am from Russia. Um, <laughs> I I think we are still some ways off for such a revolution in my homeland. But uh, it is good to be uh, here and working towards the um, the uh, the liberation of the people. Yes, yes. Uh, have you have you read uh, uh, the, the the manifesto, uh, Mr. Marx's uh, uh, manifesto? I have indeed. Um, I, I may I have some issues with his prose styling, but I cannot uh, I cannot argue with uh, uh, with the um, the points he makes. Um, uh, Felix and I have been uh, distributing. Has have been distributing copies uh, door to door. Actually, um, I mean, it's it's not that everyone can read them, but it's it's nice to have. It's nice to it's nice to have a have have a copy and hold it in your hand. I think I'm I'm, I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot uh, while I'm here. Things I didn't expect to learn actually. And learning is the point. Once we can. Uh get um, everyone who does hold a copy of the book to read it, uh, then we can, um, uh, we, we can, there, there will truly be nothing holding us back. Uh, and um, for as, uh, as um, um, as uh, dense as the, uh, um, uh, the writing of, uh, of um, uh, uh, Comrade Marx may be at least um, one does not have to learn uh, Latin to read it like the Bible. Oh, oh yes, um, that, that, that's I can't I can't I can't read Latin. Um, and there is there has been some some talk about translating it uh, to uh, to Vietnamese. Uh, I think I think there might even uh, be a copy. Uh, but um, but yeah, I think uh, it's it's quite it's quite good in French as well. <laughs> like, it's not it's not so bad. Yeah. If if you don't like Mr. Marx's prose, uh, sadly the 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 uh, the prose of, uh, of, of 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 Paul is not uh, is is not that is not much better, is it? Indeed, indeed. So, so yeah, um, Vin and I have been working on a on a on a press. I think originally for 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 booklets of of terrible poetry, but uh, we shall we shall turn it to more inflammatory uh, content. Um, 
a little bit of pamphleteering never did anyone any harm you know? indeed um I, I i collected the other day some rousing words from um uh, our sisters who um uh, seize the cannon um uh, perhaps if we uh, if we can distribute um their experiences um amongst the people it will um uh, buoy up their spirits um for the work that is to come do, do you think uh, our guest will will find it easy to get back to london you know the i heard rumors of uh of the republic's troops trying to put in some kind of cordon uh, around us um, we shall, maybe we shall have to smuggle her out perhaps uh, perhaps indeed um one thing um i'm certain of is that the um that Versailles will not make it easy for us. And in turn, we must not, uh, uh, we must not um, uh, relent in our opposition to them. <laughs> I, th I think Win is, uh, is, uh, it gets kind of distracted by that by that comment from Felix and is now staring at, uh, at Jenny Marx, who's I think you know actually you know there is there is some kind of speech being made right like there's some kind of conversation happening that we are sort of uh, tangentially like having and he's he's staring at her and he's going yes she's quite brave isn't she yeah just kind of this like just just a bit distracted. Um, I think that's that's probably good for me if if people are happy with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I guess I will draw a new card. What are oh the com the committee of public morality? Uh, I remember this. I think I think uh, uh, I think I think Wynne has written down in a notebook: the specter of communism is haunting Europe. Can it haunt Asia as well? Like, I, think it's, I think he has written down this before. <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, I mean, I had my eye on something else, but I think um, uh, I think maybe the committee for public uh, public morality uh, gets straight to the the top of my list. <laughs> um, so let me. that from the drop down. Considering that the evils of drunkenness and gambling have a deleritous effect on the readiness of our soldiers, uh, cafes will close from midnight to six in the morning, all gambling houses will be immediately closed by the National Guard, uh, and any woman who is a prostitute is to be arrested in the street. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think... Uh, I think this is definitely one for for Felix. <laughs> um, uh, I wonder. No, it, it, Felix hit by the fact that cafes close at midnight. It, yeah, it's a it's this is a disaster it's, for for it's Felix's life. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't know. Does this uh, is this a chance for us to see Felix and Amanda? Because you no, know, I think we we know very little about their relationship. 
Yeah. Um, I don't know if this is a chance to get Camille on screen as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Makes sense. <clears throat> Um, so yeah, I think maybe, how do I set this scene? I think maybe Felix, um, you know, at, at half past midnight, having, having been kicked out of, of a cafe, uh, is knocking on Amanda's door, you know, um, yeah, I, yeah. Maybe maybe he's had a glass of wine or two. He's he's not drunk, uh, but you know he is looking for. He's looking to continue socializing. He is not ready to to turn in, and he says, "Oh well, we've got a call, a call to Amanda." How does that sound? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I don't know whether you know his knock on the door wakes up Camille or whether she is precocious enough to be up after midnight. Uh, in any case, I, I I would imagine that she's actually kind of at the door, looking through it, and then basically telling her mother. Um, um, sorry, um, I think she's revolutionary enough to call her mom by her first name. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Amanda, there's a drunken man at the door. Uh, I, I think, I think, I think this new habit of Camille's is still like, is still extremely strange to her mother, and uh, and I think, uh, I think, I think Amanda kind of like, uh, like, like, like sort of what she has to be like Amanda, like just like has to say it out loud herself, and then she goes. Um, uh, uh, um, uh, do you, does he does he does he look does he look drunk? Because I think that it's quite it's quite late, Camille. So, what 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 do your eyes tell you about this man? So I'm looking out of the window. How does he look like? Um, yeah, I think um, I think. Felix is pretty bohemian, right? Even even by Montmartre sta standards in the commune, um, uh, maybe his his hat is at a, a rakish angle, and he is you know a after having knocked at the door, is is waiting and, and scribbling in a notebook some thoughts, uh, and maybe uh, maybe looking up at the at the window as uh, as kind of Camille clo like you know leaves the curtains go after having peeked out. So yeah, I, I mean, maybe he's leaning against the, the, the jam of the door uh, and maybe that kind of is 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 because it, cause it's late and he's just waiting. He doesn't know how long he's gonna wait or maybe there's a little bit of tipsiness there as well. Okay, so she's looking there saying, well, his clothes are disheveled and he's leaning. So it seems to be like he must have at least drinking something, but He's still writing, so he can't be completely out. Um, uh, I think Can I, I think Amanda away, Amanda? <laughs> just again, she just shakes her head at the, at the sound of her name, and she comes up and she. I think she also like peeks out the window and she says, "Oh, it's him. Uh, that this this is this is fine." Uh, she opens the door and she says, uh, "Um." Felix, it's it's late, and uh, given that I'm not able to work, my ability to offer you hospitality is also quite limited. Um, what what uh, I I do I do not have wine. I do not have anything. So why are you here? Well, oh, you're not able to work. I had come to warn you because I wasn't sure if uh, uh, if you were out in the bash. Um, these, these new you came eating. to my house. You came to my house to warn well, me. Well, I, I came here to see if you were around to warn you about this new edict because, you know, uh, who knows? Uh, the committees have lost the run of themselves, you know? And, and, they, and, and, you, and you waited till the cafes kicked you out. You timed it exactly then. Just that was, that was coincidence. 
it's true. I am I am a terrible person. <laughs> yes, I think, Man, I think who is that? Um, this is a uh, 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 this is a friend of mine. Uh, you can you can you can come say hello. Um, um, Felix, Felix, you remember you remember Camille? Oh, uh, you're so big. Well, I'm I'm Camille Mercier, one of the uh, one of the many students of Louise Michel, and uh, one of the uh, first new generation of citizens. And what about you, citizen? Oh, you can call me Felix. I am. Maybe I was I was. Uh... Louise's first student, uh, though I'm still learning. I think uh, maybe because I'm a poor student or maybe because we learn all our lives. Who knows? I'll let you know. Okay. Well, she never told me about you. Ah, oh, well, you know, um, I'm a great disappointment to her. Yes. Yes, Camille. Uh, Felix has the opposite problem of you. He is unteachable. And uh, you sadly cannot cannot stop learning. It is uh, that is the problem as well. Unteachable, Amanda. <laughs> well, um, I guess seeing as you you have no wine, and I I wouldn't like to presume upon your hospitality. Uh, I think he pats his jacket where you can see a, a wine bottle sized bulge. I should, I should take this one home, unless you accept deliveries. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really, if you're out of wine, that seems like a calamitous affair for any household, French or not. So, so maybe I'll leave this with you. Uh, um, yeah, I think Amanda goes, ah, oh. I mean, I, I cannot say, I can't say no to a gift. Um, and, uh, uh, She'll accept it, and she—I think she will hand it to Camille and say, uh, uh, and ask Camille to go put it away. Uh, and then, as as Camille kind of like leaves the scene, she will say, um, uh, "Felix, just be be careful. I I uh, I assume I assume you are going to join the National Guard." Ah. Uh... Not, not unless they force me at gunpoint. You know me, I'm not. I mean, a firebrand without the actual fighting, you know? Um, I mean, usually cowards try to keep that, that aspect of themselves hidden, Felix. Well, I mean, maybe that means I'm not a coward. I, I just don't want to fight. I mean, yes, plenty maybe, of people. Maybe you can invent a new word that 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 covers that. But I think for the rest of us, a word will have to do. Uh, okay. I, I am a, an adherent of peace. Let's let's go with that for now. I, I'll work something out. That moment, I come back. I deposited the bottle back and. Uh... I think Amanda thought she hid it well, but she did not hit it well enough because I'm basically coming back with a pistol from the back of the ground and just proudly <laughs> declaring that. Well, I, for one, um, will immediately join the National Guard when they call upon me once I learn how to operate this thing. Oh, I mean, uh, I do know how to, uh, how to fire one of those pistols. Um, oh. But... Okay. Um, Maybe if you hand it to me, I can show you some of the uh, the basic mechanisms uh, at some okay. stage. She looks at you dubiously and saying, okay, are you sober enough to handle one of these? A soldier must always be ready, regardless of their drunkenness. Okay, I, th I think her curiosity gets the better of it. And then she, she moves forward and then um, hands him the pistol and goes and... Uh, I, I uh, uh, Amanda, uh, mom, uh, wh wh where did you hit the powder? I'm glad that you haven't found that at least. Maybe, maybe Felix can just show show you how to 
how to pose uh, in a particularly uh, exciting stance or something like that. Oh, I don't think I, I'm very good at uh, posing in exciting stances. And like, did did she just call you Amanda? I mean, are we are we a fully I mean, communard I'm, household here? Oh, I am just glad I'm not being called citizen at this point. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, You're just poking fun at me. Uh, no, I am not poking fun at you. Uh, I mean, all forms of, of authority are to be railed against. Isn't that right, uh, young Camille? Absolutely, citizen. Now, show me how to operate this gun. Maybe, well, maybe, maybe tomorrow morning when, when Felix is, is sober, I will, I will hand him some of the powder and you can... Okay. You you can go to the park where, okay. where someone will not to, be tomorrow. annoyed at you for firing a gun at, at half past midnight. How about <laughs> okay. that? Tomorrow? Uh, I'll, I'll hand the pistol to Amanda <laughs> instead of to Camille. And I say, well, I will uh, bid you good night, uh, young ladies. And uh, maybe we shall see each other in the park tomorrow. I think at, at this point, there's just going to be kind of a knock at the door um, and Dominique will just sort of call out, um, uh, Amanda, the gendarmes are coming. If you have a man in there, put the light out. And uh, we'll then continue on her way. <laughs> I think I think Amanda physically pushes Felix out, like onto the street, just like there is a, <laughs> there is a shove and Felix is kind of like... Uh, and, uh -huh. and yeah, Camille is shouting after him, tomorrow at 10 in the park. Uh, and he will nod and wave and, 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 and walk away. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, so I'm uh, happy to wrap up that scene now, unless we want a, a quiet word between Camille and uh, Amanda as they close the door. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think, uh, no. Yeah, because we won't see the, the post-shooting uh, scene, probably. I think Amanda will ask him himself, so what did you think of him? I don't know. Why did you call him a coward? Is he, is he a member of the National Guard? Has he, taken up, uh, has he taken up a gun to fight for free Paris? Well, you're right. I think in that case, I don't like him. If I, if I, everything, if everything that Louise says is right, then we cannot afford to have cowards in uh, in uh, in in this new republic. Um, uh, a, 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 a cold, logical opinion, as ever, daughter. Now, now go to bed. <laughs> mm, okay. Um, and you will get the powder out tomorrow morning. Yes, and you will have to close your eyes as I do it because you absolutely cannot see that I hide it. Okay, and she goes upstairs. Okay, nice. Yeah, okay, uh, I guess we can wrap that scene there. Uh, okay, public morality, indeed. <laughs> uh, so let me draw a third card again. Uh, so Thomas, this is your scene to choose from. Secret Miseries. Mm. Or oh, speculation as in price speculation. Ah, that makes sense. Uh, the Republic is in danger. Uh, Okay, yeah, I think um, um, 
I think I would pick the secret uh, miseries of uh, uh, Montmartre. And I am imagining this is a scene with, um, uh, so, so what, so what this this placard is about is just, I mean, just how bad things are uh, in uh, uh, in in that in that neighborhood, um, and um, and I think I think it can be a short scene, but I would love to see uh, Dominique uh, on uh, there as 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 a doctor uh, doing something, and. Um, uh, I can see Louise Michel being there as well. I can also see uh, Vin uh, uh, kind of trying to trying to learn. So um, uh, maybe uh, maybe it's a clinic. Maybe Dominique uh, is running a clinic. Uh, David, does that sound uh, interesting? Where Vin is kind of helping out. Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good. Um, um, it it could be interesting. I don't I don't know Donna or Sebastian. It could be uh, it could be interesting if you could play just the person who is the patient. You know what I mean? Like I think it would could be nice to have somebody uh, um, who is uh, yeah speaking for them. You know. Yeah, um, maybe I'll maybe I'll pick a pick a name off the list of people that we haven't seen yet. Um, uh, Josephine Marche, second name. Uh, yeah, so Josephine Marche. <laughs> He's actually Dominique's assistant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just saw that. Can ignore that. <laughs> so I will pick a different person. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe maybe Marguerite Marchandon, uh, who yeah, you know, whose whose uh, family connections are not yet on screen. So. Um, so she is okay. a dressmaker. Um, so yeah, I think uh, Vin is uh, Vin is just uh, uh, trying to help out, uh, trying to be Dominique's assistant, and is uh, uh, and is just sort of like um, uh, what 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 is I think I think I think Vin just straight up straight up asked Dominique like how how do you how do you do this every day there are so many people here and they're they are they are hungry and they are uh, weak and and you um, you keep helping them and this is not even your country either like why why are you here surely surely you could be doing this in your own home my home is a part of france and my family have been a part of it for many uh, generations but why am i here in paris There is, you are right, there is suffering all around the world. I came here to learn to maybe get support. Some day I am sure I will return to Martinique, but right now I am here and there is work to be done. I, I cannot turn my back uh, on any suffering. Um, and 
Um, I think she'll um, uh, finish up. Um, um, I think maybe at the moment she's she's kind of um, uh, just finishing off suturing um, a um, um, a wound um, on on someone. Um, but then we'll gesture kind um, gesture over to um, uh, Marguerite um, and say. Um, in the meantime, if you could ask the madame uh, what the problem is while I get uh, cleaned up um, and yeah, you know, she'll kind of start rinsing off her hands in a, um, in a bowl of water. And um, it's probably not, uh, not as clean as one might like, but uh, yeah. Um, I think, I think uh, Vin will turn to Marguerite and go, um, uh, Madame, are you are you are you are you here to see the doctor? Are you are you pregnant? Um. Yeah. So I think. Um, I think you know, uh, Marguerite has blushes at this and denies it, and I think you know. Uh, yeah, she just starts complaining about the, the new rules. Uh, my, my family run a, a wine shop and now we can't make ends meet. I'm, we need help from the committee to, 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 to help feed us. Um, there's, there's not enough money in anything anymore. Uh, you put us out of a job. And, and we need help. Um, but this was the only place I could come to think of because the the, the committee always closes their doors. I cannot complain to them. You you you've you've lost your job. Uh, are you not able to sell wine uh, anymore? I mean, surely. Uh, this is this is a this is a moment of celebration. I think there's yeah, as much drinking as ever in Paris, if not more. Well, people people aren't aren't drinking in the cafes anymore, and I think they feel like they are stockpiling. I don't I don't know. I can't explain it. I'm not a a doctor or a, a journalist or a leader. I just know that people aren't spending as much money with us as they used to. Then I think Vin will turn to Dominique and go, uh, I, th I, think she, she's, I think she's complaining that people are not drinking enough. This does not feel like a medical problem. I'm not, I think this is, I think this is a political question. I, and I don't know if you're running that kind of clinic. I mean, we, it's a, it, sorry, 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 go ahead, David. No, I was gonna say, we um, must uh, um, always be um, able to listen to the um, complaints of, uh, of those who uh, visit us. It is, it is not enough to merely um, uh deal with um maladies we need support for everyone um food drink all the things that uh, lead to good health and good life um uh, sh and she'll kind of gesture around half the people um, if not more that are in this place would not be here if they were provided for well enough um uh but i think that um she will kind of give a um a kind of um um gr uh, you know sort of grin to um uh marguerite and say uh however madame if uh, if you do not um uh have any immediate uh ailments perhaps this uh, perhaps we can uh, continue this conversation whilst i see to my next patient well 
I mean, we're going to be starving soon if, if this continues. I remember what it was like in 48. I, I was young, but I but things got bad and, and this this can get worse. It'll be a medical emergency if, if no one gets food. Indeed, we we have to work to create a uh, um, a stockpile of food and ensure that everyone is fed. I I hope that the um, uh, that the uh, commune will have thought ahead this far, but. Perhaps we had better make sure that they do raise a um, raise it with them and start organising what we can. So, yeah, I think uh, Marguerite kind of nods and, and, and walks away, and maybe uh, you will see her, you know, later on in the day, annoying someone from the from a committee about about this problem. I think I think uh, I think if I, I'm sorry I don't know if I was interrupting you David but I think Vin will turn to Dominique and she'll just say like you know. and then do you think this do you think this will work do you think this will last is is your plan to to go back to Martinique and and do something like this there is that what I should be trying to do? We we must, um, I think, deal with the deal with with the problems that face us um whether here or at home um the not not all um not all ailments require the same cure though i think it is fair to say that the uh, problems that we see um uh, here um, and in Martinique and well I am sure in uh, um, in your land as well um, all have the uh, same root cause and yeah and I guess here we have an example of that cause being defeated Indeed, we've got to there are th there are those who can afford to um, look ahead and plan great works, but much of this work is just done by taking it one day at a time and dealing with the problems that face us now. Yeah, I think I think that's good for me. Yeah, yeah cool. Okay. Um, yeah, so... Um, yeah, so I think that is the end of Act One, unless anyone has anything to add. Um, I think maybe we can we can take another break. Resume. Okay, so we're back for Act Two. Uh, we have some intro text uh, for this as well. Uh, a kind of God words on Act Two are grim paranoid and falsely confident. Uh, between April 3rd and May 20th, 
uh, first defeats, last defiance, in which the commune fights the first battles of the civil war and paranoia increases. Uh, so I think we can continue the um, the order we had done in last. So that was, uh, I think, David, you can take the first paragraph. Sure thing. Uh, yes. Uh, so on April 3rd, the National Guard and many women marched out of Paris towards Versailles. Everyone was sure the army wouldn't shoot fellow citizens. The Versailles forces had quietly recaptured forts along the way. They mercilessly cut down the marchers, executing anyone who surrendered. The commune promised to retaliate by killing hostages. Uh, the second siege of Paris had begun. Um, the commune began to adapt to war. Every man between 18 and 40 years old had to serve in the National Guard. The political police hunted for treason. Searches for men who did not uh, report for the guard became intrusive and even violent. But when the commander called for 12,000 men to muster, fewer than 2,000 actually came. Um, Sebastian, you want to read the oh. last okay. paragraph there? On May 9th, Fort EC, crucial for the defense of Paris, fell after weeks of heavy fighting. The commune created a committee of public safety and gave it dictatorial powers. Meanwhile, the work of the commune continued, becoming more radical, more socialist, and more egalitarian as the final showdown loomed nearer. Okay, so, uh, David, uh, sorry, during our, yeah, David, I think you're first. Uh, to I, I think so, yep. Yeah. And so these are still all in the placard stack. So I'm just checking over these. I'll probably leave that one for someone that's more intimately involved with it. Um, Tempted by the one. Yeah, I think I'm tempted by both the Versailles and the Fall of the Vendome column. I think I'm actually going to start with the Fall of the Vendome uh, column. Um, is, uh, so, I'm just going to find in here. Cool. Uh, yes, um, this monument to oppression, which has no place in the new era we find ourselves. The monument to Napoleon I, located in the expensive Place Vendôme and in the style of a Roman triumphal column, is particularly hated by the commune. It is torn down in front of a large audience. Many spit on the shattered statue of the emperor. Um, so yeah, I think um, I think that this is. Um, uh, going to be um, as, as obviously as seen at the very toppling of the column itself. Um, so I'm imagining, you know, a big scene of lots of people kind of with the um, ropes and chains coiled around the statue, pulling it down. Um, I think I am in this scene going to play um, as Anna again. Um, and I think, again, Anna is going to be slightly separate from the crowd itself, um, uh, um, uh, reporting on this, um, uh, possibly even has a, um, uh, a camera with her um, that she has uh, liberated for the cause. And um, yeah, I think, uh, uh, you know, anyone who is interested in, in being in the scene can be, can be present. I think I would like Gustave to be there because in, so in, in in historic actuality, he wrote an article saying, I think this column should be disassembled 
um, and he was later on held responsible for the toppling of the column when he always said, no, 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 I was not responsible. I said, disassemble and reassemble. I didn't say tear down. Um, so, um, uh, so, yeah, so he might literally be in a conversation with, with, with Anna about that while, while she's reporting on the scene. Cool, cool. Anyone else wants to be in the scene? Or? I mean, I think um, Louise Michel will, will be there, but I think yeah. maybe just as a background figure, maybe standing on uh, on a, on some kind of barricade, you know, and, and, and you know, gesturing wildly <laughs> at the assembled crowds. Yeah, and I think maybe sort of when we open the scene, um, Anna has just got the um, uh, has the, the has her camera set up and is under the under the hood um, and is trying her best to get a not too blurry shot of the action uh, with with uh, Louise Michelle um, um, on on the column um, uh, as uh, um, as the scene opens up. Um, yeah, and I, I think um, as as she um, uh, as as she sort of comes out from underneath the the um, the, the the yeah the cover thing, um, she will. Um, um, I, I think this is perhaps when when sort of Gustave is, um, well, if not arriving on the scene, certainly when when Anna um, uh, sees him. Um, yeah. We'll see. Ah, um, uh, Comrade Colbert. Um, uh, it's a um, uh, good to see you here on this uh, momentous day. Um, do you have time for a, uh, a few a few words? Well, Citizen Anna, I'm surely happy to speak. I'm just glad you didn't put me in your frame there. Um, I mean, I, I always said um, uh, I'm as unhappy as as the next citizen about this celebration of French imperialism, but. Um, um, yeah, um, I mean, there was no need necessarily to just tear it down wholesale. I think, um, uh, well, it, it is fair to say that given the current state of the, um, uh, of the um, aggression by Versailles, we should hardly concern ourselves with the, um, She'll sort of gesture with a few uh, broken limbs of marble when there is bone plenty already shattered. Oh, um, I mean, uh, of course there is. Um, uh, I, um, I, 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 um, I fully side with with um, any call against military violence, uh, in uh, to which Napoleon the First definitely stands as a uh, horrible reminder and. Uh, um, you can you can uh, you can surely quote me on the fact that this statue has no artistic merit whatsoever and therefore does not belong in a public place in the public's eye and should be shoved away out of our sights in the Place d'Invalides or somewhere next to Napoleon's tomb or so. But um, and I think that um, I don't know um, um, <laughs> violence is violence no matter. Uh, and, and, and no matter who, um, no, no matter who begets it, and uh, even a worthless piece of art, it, uh, it, it should be the artist's choice whether to remold the statue or um, um, or or sell it or keep it somewhere, uh, rather than to tear it down and break it. Uh, but um, have we not, uh, as as the uh as the people of the Commune of Paris, have we not transformed this art into something new, a symbol of um, the um, future without such uh, emperors and kings uh, towering above us? Well, that sure is an interesting artistic idea that um, manipulating an existing work and express a new idea. Uh, no, I, I, uh, I, 
that take you up on that, that the very act of placing a statue from a high column onto uh, the even ground might be a, a new piece of um, 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 art that is done in the performance of it rather than in the say painting of a picture and the molding of the sculpture itself. I take that as an, it's an, an interesting new form of um, artistic expression. I'm just, um, I'm just worried about the repercussions um, um, seeing how um, <laughs> seeing how the uh, 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 Versailles troops have dealt with our communards, arts, that this will just invite even further violence. I think at this stage, uh, comrade, the um, Versailles hardly require an invitation. They seem more than happy to gate crash what we have here. Um, and I think she'll like carefully take the, the slide out of the camera and yeah. and 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 wrap it up in a in, in the little pouch to, uh, to to put in her uh, bag. Yeah. Well, I still hope that our our work in our committees for education and the arts and music and um, and the um, equality of the sexes will uh, will still win the minds over. Um, um, so I uh, I stand hopeful. And I remain hopeful on that end. On that, uh, on that, um, uh, comrade, we certainly um, agree. The only um, a true way of um, uh, of ending um, this and indeed all conflicts is with um, uh, is with um, uh, universal um, consciousness, and that must remain um, at the forefront of everything we do. Well, to that I gladly drink, and um, the, um, he similarly uh, kind of, uh, I don't know, magics into existence a little bottle that he has hid somewhere um, and invites, um, invites Anna to a drink. Okay. Yeah. And yes, she, she will definitely toast to that. Um, and yeah, and I think that's probably, um, unless uh, you wanted to add anything with uh, Louise Michelle um, Donna. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think I'm happy. Happy to be the subject of a photograph and uh, making a lot of noise in the background. Uh, awesome, know. awesome. Uh, okay, so um, I guess I will pick a scene. Um, so let me. Consider this one. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe burning the guillotine is what I have in mind. I think maybe the um, the act of you know, destroying one symbol of oppression <laughs> leads directly to to another. Um, dulling the national razor of their own volition, a group of women take the guillotine out of La Roquette prison and with much applause set it on fire in the courtyard. So maybe this is, you know, um, uh, a week or two later, uh, I think we have this in the, um, There's maybe a party atmosphere going on in in the courtyard. You know, people are maybe using uh, using this as a a great venue for for dancing. Uh, but I think we kind of see uh, Louise Michel um, kind of speaking, um, like in one of the, next to one of the colonnades uh, surrounding the. Um, the courtyard, uh, maybe speaking to someone about the next step for uh, for the commune, or you know how how much worse things are going to get, especially now that uh, the column that we sent to Versailles uh, was uh, destroyed. Um, uh, I, 
Hmm, I'm not sure. Uh, I know I'm, I'm of two minds here. Maybe maybe this is something, or maybe we, we go with both. You know, Gustav maybe had been involved in that column, and maybe uh, maybe Louise Michelle sees that an opportunity to to turn him to her side. Um, or, or maybe maybe they're talking to Vin as well. I don't know. Yep, I'm good with that. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure uh, what Vin is going to do. But yeah, I, I I can do my thing of asking questions, which is what Vin has done so far. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think it'd be interesting to see uh, Vin on on screen with Louise, right? Um, okay, yeah. Uh, I think maybe. Okay, maybe. Uh, uh, I think uh, I have a I have a way to start, which is if Louise and Gustav uh, are talking, uh, Vin can Vin can step up and go like, uh, uh, sorry to interrupt, but. Um, wasn't the guillotine uh, some kind of symbol of uh, a revolution at some point? Wasn't it what was used to cut off the heads of nobles? Why, why are people burning it now? I'm a bit, uh, I'm a bit confused. Well, it may have started as a way to rid ourselves of uh, of nobles, but it became something much different. Yeah, it definitely, so Gustav kind of stumbles into the picture at this point and he's absolutely sodden plastered in this situation. It's a symbol of the eternal danger of any revolution, which is to end up killing its own children out of revolutionary further and Louise, if I can, can congratulate you on one thing, actually burning a symbol of that makes me hopeful that despite your committee on public safety, your, your, your heart may still be on the right kind of side of history. Well, I, I think uh, violence within the commune is to be avoided at all costs. I think you're right on that side, Gustav. And uh, one way or the other, I don't want to see the guillotine return. And I couldn't agree more on that, but why, why, why a committee on public safety? Why that name? Why, with its with its charged history of bloodshed during the first revolution, wow. why give it dictatorial powers? Why risk it? You think I make all the decisions in committee, Gustav? Do you? I'm asking you as one of the members of it. I mean, I, 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 I resigned out of protest against that because I think that is the, exactly the beginning of what leads us to the guillotine. If, 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 I, if I may interject, you say why risk it all, but there's no part that does not involve risking it all. There is, is there some nobility in being obliterated by the Versailles forces as we stand there, paintbrush in hand, masterpiece uh, on the wall? Is that is that somehow more noble than um, meeting it with uh, with with violence as well? I'm I'm not talking mobility. I'm not talking nobility of actions here at all. I'm just. I'm just observing the course of history and how the course of history just from one violence another follows. And so if, I think if, if, if this revolution is to start any chance, we should know better than, than, than to, to reassign some form of dictatorial power to a group of people. And, 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 and yes, in the face of Versailles, um, 
make make a doubled effort at at uh, at the rule um, of the people by the people, rather than instating a new form of revolutionary military police. Well, maybe uh, let me defend or at least ap apologize for our choice of words, Gustav. Um, the words mean something very different in isolation than they might mean to someone who has studied the, the first revolution. But the words describe keeping the public safe. And so I cannot force you to interpret it in a particular way. I'm not responsible for you thinking of the terror. I, I don't think we can argue that everything we do must be absolutely pure in order to be worthwhile. But, but my dear citizen Louise, you, you as much as I am, a woman of letters and a woman of the arts, as, as well as of, of teaching and politics. And you know that all words have history and baggage and we can't treat them in isolation from- And, and we, are not, we are not bound by history. We are making a new world, Gustav. We will reclaim these words from those who have uh, infected them with something else. Which makes me all the more happy that this guillotine here is burning. Let's hope we'll never, it will never rise out of the ashes again. Uh, and, and the committee is always susceptible to direct democracy. Gustav, you know this, we are all elected. We, are, we will all be thrown out if we do anything that the commune does not agree with. Frankly, you know, uh, uh, I, I, I won't be surprised if, if we're all voted out next time and we see an, a new bunch of people discover these truths for themselves. And I should count myself lucky to see that day when the first government of commune hands over power peaceably to a next newly elected one. Well, I, I pray for that day too, Gustav. Maybe, maybe young Vin will uh, will stand for election for for your for the seat you uh, um, you vacated. Yes, yes, young Vin. So, what's your what's your view? What will you stand for as a representative? Oh, I I I don't think I'm representative of anyone except myself right now so um i i am more worried that we will not have time to see the election because um we'll all be dead so that is what is on my mind as you can see vin is uh inspired to optimism by, by, by his presence in, in Paris. <laughs> Seeing all of us live to see another day is a good political plank to stand on. I think, I think you will have my vote. Okay. Uh, I'm happy to, to close the scene there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like that, okay. yeah. Uh, so let me drag the guillotine down and uh, Thomas, your, your scene next. Uh, yeah. Um, Prussian holiday <laughs> is just, is, is very good. Um, <laughs> the description is also amazing. Uh, everything about it is amazing, but I don't, uh, I think I will go with uh, the Versailles attack uh, suddenly. Um, uh, citizens to arms, man the barricades. Um, 
yeah um i think uh, there's an attack um i think this is this is not the outermost forts they've all fallen like i think this is on on uh, on the 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 walls of uh, paris um and i think um uh i think amanda is going to fight um along with uh along with her uh uh her lover uh, lodoiska they are both they are both planning to fight and so i think she I, I think I think this might not even be a series. It might just be this glimpse. But like she writes uh, a letter and gives it to Camille and says, uh, "Camille, if I don't come back, read this. Keep it safe till then. If I do come back, we'll we'll burn it together." um yeah and that's that that's good with me the letter <laughs> the letter does i mean uh at this point we go to uh, no no i think it's oh sebastian has a scene okay okay yeah 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 all right but yeah that's my scene okay okay yeah so uh sebastian do you want to i mean so if we think we want to stay in this kind of scene or the the kind of general idea of the the attack you can say we we haven't resolved it and you can use it as a setting for your scene or you can you can discard it and draw a new one if you want a full choice again um mm, let me just see what comes up arrest the cowards <laughs> i like that yes that works beautifully for camille um um, so I think that is during the attack, um, the National Guard calls upon its citizen to assist in the arrest of the former gendarmes of Paris. So while the attack is going on, um, uh, I said that in the act, arrest the cowards. We're doing that. So the National Guard calls upon all citizens to assist in the arrest of the former gendarmes of Paris. Um, former policemen who stayed in the city are accused of being spies. The communes orders their arrest. Um, uh, so a child wailing in the night, the sudden sound of a gunshot, smiling while sharing a bottle. Um, Is this maybe, uh, I'm just reminding ourselves of something we, we did in at the very start. We established that Victor Jacquard, Anna's husband, used to be a police informant before the commune. Right. Is this a a chance to to like return to this? Either you know, Victor on one side or the other of this. Yeah, I think so. Um, so our or, so it depends on whether um, was whether you would like Camille to know that about her father or not, or to to know that about sorry, not her father, but to know that about. Um, Victor, did I, did I just confuse characters? Sorry, I think I confused characters. He, he, uh, yeah, uh, Victor has no connection to Camille as far as I am aware. Uh, no, right, it's Anna Jacla. Yeah, sorry, that was my that was my confusion. Yeah. Now, if 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 you were if if my understanding is correct, you picked this because you want to arrest Felix, which is which is amazing, and you should do that. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's I think that's that's what I'm after. Yeah, yeah. because he's a coward. Yes, and, uh, <laughs> yes. But, but, but not a not a previously a policeman, but maybe in Camille's mind, you know, being a coward is enough to to be a traitor to the commune, right? Yeah, yeah. So no, I, I I think there is a, there's a kind of the 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 the, the meaning of the 
the meaning of the proclamation arrest the cowards might mean arrest the former gendarme. But I think uh, if Kamil hears the phrase arrest the cowards, he can. Yeah, like, she, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so yeah, so let's let's go with that. So so David, I think you would be in that scene for sure. Or um sorry, Don, uh ah Don, you'll be in the scene with Felix. Um and I think Amanda can come into the scene at any point. What I basically imagine the scene opening is that um is that Camille is dragging a uh a, a set of uh, National Guardsmen behind her to the place where Felix Vincent, she knows he's living and basically is guiding them to the door to have them bang the door and basically arrest him. Um, I, don't, I don't know whether the National Guards would follow a 12 year old girl to arrest somebody. Is this, is this that serious or is, is, this, uh, is, is this an attempted arrest that is not being taken seriously because I, I I think we can let the scene play out whether they will ultimately take her seriously or not. Okay, um, okay. And, I mean, I almost imagine this is the kind of almost like a direct follow on to the discussion that Louise Michelle and Gustav had about like the terror and how we do not want to do these things. And then the very next scene, we see this thing happening. Yeah. Um, not the next scene, but the but yeah. very shortly thereafter, we cut to exactly what they both said didn't they did not want to happen. Um, uh, and you know may, maybe the the word of of someone as obviously um, part of the commune and and vociferously communard as as Camille sways some some minds and I guess maybe people all know. Uh, that Felix is a layabout and hasn't joined up in the National Guard and all that kind of stuff. So I think it all plays into this uh, tragedy or, or whatever it turns out to be. Um, so do you, you said your your Camille is bringing them to where Felix lives. So maybe it's like at first at first light, the crack of dawn. Felix is certainly yeah. not up and about. So maybe he is a little bit uh, hung over <laughs> and, and dragged out of his bed. So, so yeah, so basically we hear kind of the, sh the shuffling of, of a couple of feet and then, um, and then uh, a, a, a loud, self-assured uh, young girl's voice saying, the coward is in here, arrest him. And then we hear some kind of more or less uncertain banging on the door uh, going, um, Felix Vincent, open. So, I mean, I think you've got to kick down the door because, you know, <laughs> I think maybe you finally wake him up, but it's too late. The the, the guards kick the doors down to, to find him like jumping into uh, yeah. his, his proper clothes. Uh, and you know he looks maybe like a like a deer in headlights as the uh, as the national guard like run into him uh, to 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 grab him and, and arrest him. Okay, so as he's standing in there, you see basically Camille uh, saying, "Citizen Felix Vincent, you stand accused of um, of um, of shirking your." Um, your civic duty of signing up for the National Guard when they were calling on you. Um. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think the the, uh, the National Guard maybe look at Camille. I, I don't know. Uh, what do you think? David yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, I yeah. can pick up. Um, I'll pick up Jean Guy, um, who is... Um, uh, a corporal, um, a butcher's assistant. So I imagine he's quite a big, um, burly guy. Um, um, and um, yeah, I think I think there's a a moment of like um, of of sort of um, not, well, not confusion, but like indecision passes over his face, um, and he says. The girl does have a point. Uh, 
you don't look like you're uh, infirm uh, to me, uh, citizen. Is there a reason you haven't joined up? Well, I, I was delivered no papers uh, conscripting me into into the guard, uh, so uh, I have other duties uh, as a member of the international uh, and you know, as a student of Louise Michel. Uh, I have, I would think, better things to be doing with my time, but. Uh, He's lying. He's lying. He should know full well that he is to be signed up. I was present there when he was talking with my mother about the new call of conscription and just talking how he is just shirking picking up the weapons when I myself am wearing one. And, 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 and uh, Jean, uh, who do you think taught this little girl how to shoot? It was me. She then why aren't you joining my mother at the barricades when the Versailles were entering? Even Louise Michel was at the barricades. I think the uh, girl has a good point here. If you get yourself up to the front, get yourself a rifle, then uh, we probably have we probably need to say no more on this, citizen. If you'd rather wait out the attack in a cell, then. I mean, I, I think you should be uh, manning the barricades yourself rather than waking me up in the middle of the night for no good reason. But of it's course, nine, I will. It's fully, it's fully 9 a.m. <laughs> it, is fully, it is absolutely <laughs> fully 9 a.m. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, Hungover people are, are neither sensible of, of the wise thing to say in this situation, <laughs> nor of the time of day, right? <laughs> uh, I, will, I will present myself first thing in the morning uh, to, uh, to sign my name on the whatever the, it is you have. You're already about three hours too late, uh, um, son. <sighs> but we can make up for lost time. Um, and I think he's going to kind of um, grab um, uh, um, um, grab uh, Felix by the, 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 the shoulder and start dragging him towards the doorway. Uh, can I even get properly dressed? Or are you arresting me? You want to volunteer, or you, is this conscription now uh, the way we're going to do it, like the Republicans? I can bring his clothes. How, yeah, how you, you, you do that, and uh, while we're uh, while we're having uh, while you're clearing your head on our walk, uh, son, you can make a decision as to whose rifles you'd rather face. Oh, well, 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 my participation in this commune is in no doubt if you speak to people other than a, a child. Re reporting things she heard, what? <laughs> Be between, between her mother and, uh, and me in private conversation. Yeah, I guess she is a spy of, of no good character. Um, and I think at that point, um, uh, um, uh, the um, uh, Jean is just going to backhand um, uh, Felix across the face and say, I've had quite enough out of you, lad. Let's get moving. I think for, for me that's good so for me i would be happy to follow this procession with a very um with a very proud smile and no face <laughs> uh, yeah great okay so i think that is our four scenes uh so uh so the close act two we um we narrate a brief montage about one of our characters on the eve of invasion. Um, 
I guess it could be uh, you know, whichever of our, our, our two characters uh, makes the most sense. Um, I guess we go we go around. I guess we can continue in the same order. Yeah. So just just oh. to clarify, is this is this a, a, a montage that ends in their death or um... no no? So um, this is a, just a quick montage, so right. like a, a quick uh, vignette uh, about a character. Um, it we're in Act Two, so if you do want one of your characters to die, you can do that. Uh, you could have done that in the scene or in in the in the montage, right? Uh, but it. the important thing is in Act Two, only one character in total could die, uh, but there's no requirement for it. Okay, sure thing, sure thing. Um, I think um, because it kind of makes um, makes sense um, with the. Uh, what's what's been going on up until this point? Um, I think we see kind of a scene out on the western edge of the city. I mean, an area that's probably quite at this point um, has been been shelled quite considerably. Um, um, there's been you know back and forwards fighting over it, so it's desolate. It's um, and we see um, uh, Victor. Um, um, uh, Victor Jaclar um, is um, talking um, uh, in in hushed tones with a um, a man in in um, uh, in military uniform. Um, there are probably a couple of other soldiers stood around with him um, in the sort of the the the, the wake of this this um, uh, you know shelled out building. Um, and then we hear kind of a um, a, a, a few kind of um, a, a sudden like falling of, of like um, brick or something, um, and the, um, the the man in military uniform turns around and fires um, a couple of shots um, with his pistol, and um, in sort of the in in a in the behind the shelter of another uh, building nearby, um, overlooking this, we see. Um, Anna um, struck um, in the chest by um, the, by by two shots um, as she crumples forwards into the rubble. Why did she get shot, David? What happened? <laughs> I, 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 so, so one of David's characters was going to die as early as possible. You know, <laughs> you've been very curious about the <laughs> the rule. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, I think um, for me, I think we'll see Louise Michelle walking the barricades uh, in the middle of an attack, and uh, I mean holding a rifle or maybe a pistol but not uh, using it just you know a word of encouragement along the barricades and uh, and maybe making sure um, people have a chance to rest and take water but you know uh, again probably uh, when when things get hot you know encouraging people to to keep loading as fast as quickly as possible uh, and keep keep a Keep a name on those uh, Versailles soldiers. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think. I think Anna, Amanda doesn't make it back from the. From the fighting, uh, from the fortifications, I think uh, um, the 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 previous attack does not um, like. I think someone comes and knocks on uh, 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 Camille's door, and uh, uh, um, 
someone that Amanda was fighting alongside with and kind of uh, uh, tearfully informs her that uh, 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 Amanda um, like fell on the on the barricades. Yeah. Um, but just to and, clarify, uh, right? This she's not dead, right? So we can only have one character total die in Act Two. Oh, oh, okay. uh, sorry, I misunderstood so that. The, uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, I was confused about that. I was confused about it. You did say this, Donna. Like, yeah. sorry, like, I, <laughs> sorry, I, I, I thought you meant. I thought you meant one total per person yeah. rather so, than. So, so, but, so in the next act, we're all going to lose one of our two characters, or it, well, okay, David, so then, David will right, not yeah, lose then, a character. Then, then, okay, then, then, that's yeah, then, that's then, that's where I I got confused. Yeah. Now, then forget that. I think Amanda is just. Um, um, yeah, it's just, uh, so she comes back from that fight. She tells Camille, you know, like she, again, speaking up her rifle to kind of like go out and she tells Camille again, like, keep that letter with you. If I don't come back, but, you know, it's the same. It's now, it's now a routine. Yeah. Okay. We see Camille with a very firm resolve in her face, nodding. Um, and I think Gustav is just, in his studio, um, looking out of the window, seeing fires burning, hearing shots crackling all over. Um, and um, we just see that his face is filled with tears, looking down on kind of a big 30 page manuscript of um, universal arts education for peace as his big new policy that he was to introduce tomorrow um, to the committee and um, that he's now worried he's never going to be able to introduce and just yeah um, um, sort of quietly drinking himself um, into oblivion while looking out the window. Okay so I guess that is our close of act two um we take another break yeah okay so we are ready for act three the bloody week uh this is may uh, the the guide here is frenzied violent and morbid this is may 21st to 28th uh, on May 21st, the army invaded Paris. The communards defended the city from behind street barricades, but without, without organization, each section fighting on its own. The city burned from shelling or revenge. Uh, the Tuileries Palace, once home to the emperor, the Hotel de Ville and the Palais Royal were all destroyed with the flames. The army massacred anyone they thought was part of the commune. The bourgeois of the city happily denounced their neighbors to the vengeance of the government. Uh, on May 28th, the last survivors surrendered at dawn. Many were executed. Over 40,000 people were imprisoned at Camp Satori outside Versailles. The commune was over. So, um, I think I will pick uh, on the barricades as my scene. Um, I will set it. Um, for Felix. Um, yeah, I think we we see uh, Felix loading and shooting at the at the soldiers uh, here from Versailles, uh, kind of fighting maybe alongside Amanda. Um, and I think there's a there's like a, a rictus grin of kind of anger and fear on his face. Um, uh, you know, there's there's smudges of powder and grime uh, on on him, uh, and uh, you know he is I think exhausted. Uh, but I think at the at the height of this fight just before uh, the defense collapses, uh, he takes a, a, a bullet in the chest. 
and collapses uh, alongside Amanda. And yeah, I think maybe a quick conversation <laughs> but before he breeds his last or or, or maybe we just see Amanda find his body before the the retreat or something. What do you think, Thomas? Yeah, I think uh, um, <clears throat> uh, I think yeah, I think Amanda kind of like is sort of kneeling over like Felix's body. And, and she whispers, uh, I don't know whether he hears it or not. You tell me that, you know, as she's kind of like, uh, sort of tears in her eyes, she goes, um, at, at least you taught your daughter to shoot before you died. Yeah. I, I think there's like a, huh? <laughs> from, from Felix. Uh, And I think he shakes his head and sighs and, and says, well, um, you better tell her then I, I, I died heroically or, or something. At this moment, I, I wish you had remained a coward. Well, so I remain. Cowards can die heroically. <laughs> uh, and I think, you know, uh, as the kind of light fades, maybe he like reaches for his notebook and scribbles some kind of random thought into it or like starts to some, some phrasing that, that appeals to him uh, before, you know, he, it drops from his hand and he dies. Nice. Uh, okay. Okay, yeah, I think um, I will play the cemetery, um, which is um, fighting breaks out across the cemetery with soldiers of both sides using the tombstones as cover. Um, I think uh, I think this is later, like Amanda has uh, gone back, has grabbed. Uh, Camille, and they are both trying to uh, make their escape uh, along with some other um, along with some other soldiers. They're kind of retreating like further into the city to some like more central neighborhoods, and um, they get uh, uh, they get they get caught immediately in 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 a in a shootout with some. Um, uh, royalist soldiers and um, uh, uh, yeah, I think Amanda and Camilla hiding behind a, like a large ornate marble tombstone to some uh, to some noble, which is getting like chipped away um, as bullets like fire. And uh, she, uh, 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 as she kind of ducks out, takes a shot, and then like spends this arduous amount of time kind of reloading. She will like turn to Camille and say, have you read the letter already or have you actually managed to keep your prying eyes from opening it like a good girl? Um, and Camille just takes the letter from, 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 from out of her side pocket and holds it up and it's very crumpled, but it's still definitely unopened. Um, <clears throat> I, I need to 
I need I need to take that back then. Okay, but but why? Uh, because now it's not an option for me to die. Okay. Uh, um, and I think at that point, there is another bullet kind of hitting very um, close to us. And uh, at that moment, you see um, Camille, despite the kind of uh, figure she's cast before, suddenly getting very afraid and just basically jumping to hug Amanda um, very, very tightly and, uh, and, and crying, Mama, Mama. <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I, I think uh, uh, I think we can end there. Yeah. Okay, I think I'm going with court martial. Um, and um, I think um, this is um, Gustav, who's on the sideline. He can't believe that he isn't one of the ones who's presently being court-martialed. Um, and um, just basically, um, so again, to, to read the scene for, uh, for other people, the court, the council of war sentences you, the Versailles troops set up a court-martial. It is a cruel travesty of justice, a long line of people brought before the couple of board officers who invariably signal soldiers to drag the accused out for immediate execution by firing squad. Um, so yeah, this is in, 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 um, in some city corner in, in Montmartre somewhere um, very close to where the studio of um, Gustave is. And he's, he's uh, woken from his completely uh, drunken stupor in the evening before um, by hearing loud, angry protests and shouts and, and regular just cracklings of fires every, reliably every um, two, three minutes or so. Um, and he's just tumbling down, disbelieving uh, down the stairs, um, looking at the scene. Um, and yeah, does, does anybody else want to be there? Does anybody else want to be court-martialed or similarly protesting? Uh, I'm not sure. Is there any uh, NPCs that you think are caught up in this? Or, yeah, I don't know if I, um, I don't think um, So Gustav is, no, Gustav is not being court-martialed. No. No, no, he's he's stumbling into the scene. He's hearing the court martialing going on right now. Yeah, and he's heading in that direction because he's he's extremely bright. <laughs> Just... <laughs> yes, and extremely drunk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think, um... <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think, uh, uh, I think, I think Vin sees him uh, because he is heading in the opposite direction, and he yeah. tries to grab Gustav and says. Come with me, come with me, don't, like, you, you, you have a reputation, sir. They can't, they can't do this. This is, this is not right. These are all innocent citizens. We need to stop them. You, you cannot, you cannot reason with killers. 
please come with me for your own sake as we kind of like battling against uh, you know Gustav's uh, uh, forward momentum. <laughs> okay, so he's 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 trying to make effort uh, to to get uh, to get Van Vin to 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 move along and saying no no we. I'm sure. I'm sure we can reason with them. Um, this is this is what I meant. And and when 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 the burning of the guillotine. This is just how violence begets other violence. We need to we need to stop this. I think that's when like Vin lets Gustav go, uh, and uh, backs away, and uh, will say, I, I'm I'm sorry. I can't. I can't do this. Okay. We'll, we'll run. Okay. okay, and I, I don't think Gustav is paying attention much to him right now and is just stumbling into that scene. Um, um, yeah, heading, heading straight to the kind of very tired looking uh, officer and just saying, you must stop this. This is not right. These are fellow citizens. Don't. Um, and I think I'd like to end the scene there. Okay, great. Um, David, you've got a, a scene left with Dominique, I guess. Sadly, David, the rules are your second character can't die. So there's no tension in this scene. <laughs> we're, we're all we're all breathing a sigh of relief. <laughs> oh, I can drag other people in there and then uh... <laughs> um, no, so um let's see. I think I think I'm going to go for the burning of the Tuileries. Um, I know we've had a lot of of burning, but it seems a nice nice point to end on. So, um, I think um, I think that the scene is going to be. I think we, you know we've the Tuileries has been used as a kind of um, um, fallback point um, at this stage, um, but it's now clear that the we we won't be able to hold here any longer um, as the um, Versailles troops um, uh, approach um, advance. It's probably the the, the, the military word to use. Um, and I think um, Dominique is there. She's got kind of a um, an apron um, on over her, a simple dress that is like absolutely saturated with blood. Um, her, her as well, and I think she is um, um, helping sort of evacuate the last of the um, the, the wounded um, that they can take with them um, from the palace. Um, I'm, I'm again. I'm cool with anyone. Anyone who wants to be present here to to be so, um, um, and I think as as she's doing that, the um, uh, the the you know the the, the, the some of the remaining um, uh, national guard and the like are starting to um, uh, starting to t set the palace alight. Um, But yeah, I guess is is anyone else interested in being uh, being present for this? I mean, I think uh, Louis Michel might be here, maybe like standing well back as 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 it's burned down. Um, I guess maybe still, maybe not carrying a rifle anymore, but still with with the National Guard bandolier or or colors uh, on her, and just kind of watching it burn. Uh,
and um yeah i think maybe that um as as she's watching that i think this is is i think dominique is is you know obviously looking looking um completely worn worn down um and i think has has got like a um um, a flask uh, that may contain wine or may just contain water um and just takes a um a long swig from it as as she stands aside um uh louise and says we i don't know how much longer we can hold but they'll never forget this Oh, I, I pray they don't. They're gonna, their nightmares, their dreams will be haunted by what we've done here. I, I hope it's enough, but I guess if it isn't, we'll just have to keep trying. And yeah, I think maybe um, at that point, um, uh, Dominique will kind of um, um, finish up the, the flask that she was drinking from and so just toss it to the floor um, and um, go in and and um, help someone pick up a, um, a stretcher as they, they, they begin, yeah, the, the, the retreat from the palace. Okay. So... Uh, that's all our scenes uh, for montages. These are optional, so we don't have to have a montage. But you know, for those of you still sitting on the fence with regard to which of your characters dies, this is your this is your moment. Um, I'm happy to pass on a montage for for myself. Uh, so uh, Thomas and Sebastian, who which of you want to take a take a jump in first there? So just to clarify, does that mean one of our characters has to die now? Yeah. Okay, got it. Understood. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, I think we see we see Vin um, um, just running <clears throat> uh, running from that meeting with Gustav and just. Um, uh, um, like in in his haste, he runs into uh, a group of um, uh, French army French army soldiers, and uh, um, like like he like turns the corner too fast, can't can't stop, so he bumps into one of them. And uh, another one of them immediately whacks him across the head with the rifle butt, uh, and then as he collapses, there's just a there's a sound of like a like a like uh, like a like a bad kind of thud as it's like as he hits the ground way too hard and then he's bleeding out from the head. I think in that case, I'm going to continue there with Gustav as well. And as he is running to the place where the executions take place, he is um, arguing continuously with the commanding officer to stop this. And the commanding officer is continually telling him more annoyed to, to just sort of, um, while there are one or two people recognizing him in the crowd, trying to shush him away from there and to just disappear out of the scene. But then inevitably it happens that somebody recognizes him and shouts out, that's, that's Gustave Kobe, and he's responsible for uh, uh, putting that statue of Napoleon down. And he's been one of the communards. Um, and uh, the, the commanding officer is just very glad immediately to seize upon that opportunity. So he has Gustave arrested and while he is um, protesting and telling everybody this could be paradise you just have to stop 
fighting each other and put your guns down. Um, we hear another round of crackling of gunfire and him collapsing and um, out of his um, out of his hand spill um, his manifesto for um, universal free arts education for universal peace, um, just fluttering in the wind while we hear crackling after crackling of executions. And I think I just will add in the last little montage from Dominique, um, as I think we see um, um, like a, a, an impromptu medical station um, uh, later on that day. Um, and um, we see uh, Vin's uh, body um, brought in um, and, you know, she checks over him um but but clearly sees it's too late um and she just puts like a um um a hand um a hand on over his um over his chest um and says uh i'll try and get you home if i can Okay, so that is the end of Act Three. Uh, we can jump ahead to the epilogue. <clears throat> uh, let me read the text. Uh, between 10,000 and 30,000 people died during Bloody Week. Nobody knows the exact number. At Satori, disease and hunger killed many prisoners. Others were shot with no trial or only a perfunctory court martial. In Algeria, the rebellion was crushed. The country was safe again for colonization. Some communards were put on trial. Most ch chose not to cooperate with the government forces, remaining contemptuous and defiant to their death. Many were sentenced to death. Others were deported to a tropical island near Australia called New Gal Caledonia or given hard labor. Some managed to escape into exile. In 1880, general amnesty was announced. Some of the surviving communards returned home. Others never did. So, for our surviving cast member, uh, we are going to choose one of these three fates. Uh, the three choices are remain defined and try to go to trial, cooperate with the prosecutors and hope for a reduced sentence, or try to escape into exile. Uh, when we've made our choice, we draw a fate card from the appropriate deck um, and read the fate on the back without revealing it. Um, uh, our titles, so like what clique in the commune we're a member of may affect our fate. Um, some cards require us to deal with another player by asking them questions or altering the fate of their character. And it's important to note none of the cards are guaranteed to give you a result that you want, like in different the terms of defiance, corporate, or escape. Death is still possible no matter which deck you draw from. Um, yeah, and then we just narrate a brief epilogue scene for a character that reveals our fate. Okay. Um, so again, the cards, I think, have minimal description on them. The, the fate section of the character keeper will kind of give you uh, more of that. So yeah, choice, choice time. And then just draw a card from one of those three decks, whichever you're choosing when you have made your choice. Uh, do, should I go first? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> uh, escape, I think. Um, so yeah, for uh, for Amanda, Mercy, uh, I'm gonna draw an escape card. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Um, uh, so the um, so if you you make your choice and then pick the card, you'll get like two uh, description texts, which are like what's on the full card, 
which would not fit in the playing cards card. Uh, so it's um, it gives you some additional choices um, or additional explanation of those choices, and then a couple of questions to uh, uh, to consider for your scene. Um, so how, how what does this look like? Anna? Why is the dot 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 like what is that? Oh, I think that's probably just a. Um, that may be just no. how playing cards. No. <laughs> oh, sorry. The dot 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 is is just a kind of a, a bridging. So if you make the selection in the character keeper, I think in the other sections it'll give you the full rundown. Um, no, it says you try to escape in the confusion. Dot dot dot. If you are pregnant or a child. Dot dot dot. And then the options, but I don't know what the, I, I'm. I'm oh, okay. unsure about how to pass this. Let me let me have a quick look at the actual card and see what I'm missing. Yes. If I read that correctly, it means if you are pregnant or a child, someone in power pities you and takes you out of Paris. Otherwise, you're captured and shot. Oh, okay, yeah. That's that's my interpretation sense. of the card. But yeah, I I think that's how they 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 all go by the looks of it. It's sort of like. The first, the first condition is what happened. Is the first result is what happens if you match that condition, and then the second one is what happens otherwise. Okay. So that for the, the one I've got is like the if the the you know if you are a national guard X otherwise Y sort of thing. Ah, uh, okay. Does that make sense, Thomas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think uh, so. Amanda is uh, captured and shot in her attempt to escape. Yeah. So, so what does what does that look like? Um. So she and Camille are trying to escape Paris, and uh, uh, at some point they are along with a whole whole bunch of other people are like taking their chances at like various um, various different various different roads, various different gates, like different like other towns that you can head to and things like that. So. There are a whole bunch of people going, and I think um, her group is, uh, yeah, is um, as they're trying to make their way, are uh, uh, attacked, and uh, she uh, tells Camille to run while she uh, uh, turns to kind of buy the the rest of the refugees and Camille some time, yeah, and. Uh, her rifle doesn't have any doesn't have any powder in it, um, so she is swinging it around like a stick, uh, and he is easily disarmed and uh, captured, and then later shot. So the the questions on that card, if I have the right one, is how does your martyrdom reflect on the commune? What memory of you can be seen in Paris in the twenty first century? Ooh, whoa. Uh, Yeah, I mean, her martyrdom is just, um, yeah, like even in that dying moment, she kind of is is embodying the sort of um, the defiant like spirit of the commune. Um, what memory of you can be seen in Paris in the 21st century is a, is a good question um, that I do not have a good answer to. Uh, Maybe I can come back to this. Yeah, sure. Uh, Sebastian. Yeah, I drew the Council of War sentences you to death. Um, and um, um, after having chosen to remain defiant, after also seeing how they deal with my mother and finding that my mother taking up the gun to beat at them, even if she doesn't have bullets, is a very 
kind of inspirational side for me. Um, I will not make an appeal to the mercy of the court. If anything, this just completely dumbfounds the court how to deal with a 12 year old uh, female child that just acts um, like with, with, with extreme revolutionary further. Are there any questions for that card or is it just the character is shot and that's it? Yeah, so if you, in the fate section, if you pick that uh, card out of the, the list, you'll get the, the full rundown. Um, yeah, and there I just see a three dashes, so nothing else in the question section. Oh, okay, sorry. So you're remaining defiant and you're the Council of War since you took death. Uh, no, oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I see. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, that's it on that card. Um, okay. So the, you have the option of making an appeal upon the mercy of the court. If you do, you go into exile. Uh, no. But are loathed by your ex comrades, which is probably why there's no <laughs> long term uh, memories for for you in that se section. But she won't do that, and um, um, sort of by weird force of will in, in basically in, enforces no other choice upon the court but to shoot this 12 year old um, young girl, um, which is basically making everybody in that situation um, blinkered and, um, and, uh, and basically alienated by their own actions um, while um, while they were doing it. Um, yeah. It just leaves leaves everybody engaged on the um, on the Versailles side um, really disquiet about that fact. Okay. Very harsh. Uh, David uh, Dominic. Yeah, so um, Dominique remains defiant um, and is sentenced to, uh, well, deportation if, I, if she's a National Guard, but she is not. Uh, so she is sentenced to 10 years at hard labour. Um, uh, which of your old comrades is happy to see you afterwards? Um, honestly, I'm not sure that any of them are left alive, but um, I think um, this is actually um, following her release um, in, in 10 years' time, she, um, uh, she will travel back to Martinique, um, uh, where she will reunite with some of her um, um, old, um, um, old friends from sort of the home country. Um, and I think she um, will what she thinks of the commune after all that time is um, she sees it as a um, um, a setback but not a defeat um, and while um, um, she's she's left you know um, weakened and um like by her her sentence um i don't think it's quite dulled her spirit and she continues her sort of political organizing back home um okay and uh for i think we see um louise michelle go to trial uh, and she is, her tune has not changed. She is, you know, condemning the judges, condemning everyone who is sitting in, in judgment of her uh, at this trial. And she is sentenced to death. Uh, and at the execution, um, you know, she is talking directly to the soldiers, uh, you know, pointing out that there is, there is no difference between them and their families and the people they have put down and, and, and telling them to, to act like their brothers in the National Guard did, to turn on their colonel 
and I think there is I think the officer in charge of the execution has got to you know use his pistol on on her because the soldiers refuse to uh, to take aim. So I think that is that. That is our epilogue. Um, I will stop the recording and we do a quick debrief.